Welcome back to the Rebase Society. I'm standing here with State Assembly Speaker Sheila Oliver. Speaker Oliver, thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, what do you see as the biggest challenges for Senator Menendez in the upcoming campaign? I think that uh, the fact that our governor has been such an articulate spokesperson for presidential hopeful Mitt Romney, he will be on the ground trying to push that agenda in New Jersey. Although we know New Jerseyans will overwhelmingly support President Barack Obama. We have concerns, though, that with the governor out front in this presidential cycle, that he will seek to throw bombs at our U.S. Senator. Um, but there is no way that uh, congressional uh, contender uh, State Senator Joe Carrillos can match the record, the accomplishment, and uh, the track record that Bob Menendez has. And uh, you better believe that Democrats from one end of the state to the other will be pounding the pavement and ensuring that Bob Menendez returns to the U.S. Senate. Uh, Speaker, uh, you mentioned Governor Christie. He certainly has been a big, a big advocate for not only uh, President Contender Mitt Romney, but also uh, Senator uh, Carrillo, State Senator Carrillo, excuse me. Uh, do you see um, any potential um, hurdles that, again, Senator Carlos is going to have to face, even with that sort of statewide support from the governor's office. But again, you as speaker, I know you've come into some you know, confrontation with the governor. Um, with with an approval rating that's almost 60 percent, how do you explain that in New Jersey regarding Governor Christie? I believe that people in New Jersey are entertained by Governor Christie. He is very witty. Um, he uh, certainly captures attention. I think that is what grabs the attention and uh, translates into the approval rating. I believe when you start to examine the policies that the governor has effectuated, they are not policies that are embraced by a majority of New Jerseyans. And uh, I explain those approval ratings based on that. The governor very selectively chooses where he goes and holds his town halls. And he uh, communicated last week that he's done 88 town halls since he's been in office. But take a look at those communities where he does those town halls. You see no diversity in the audience. You see no bipartisan co-mingling. And he prides himself on being bipartisan uh, you know, in terms of his governance. But uh, he, he has just selectively zeroed in on communities that he knows are welcoming communities. Uh, I always challenge the governor to come to some of the towns and districts that I represent. He will get a much different reception. For our viewers in Hudson County, can you just inform us again the townships that you do represent in your district? Yes, I represent Clifton, Montclair, East Orange, and Orange. I mean, certainly a very, very socioeconomic diverse Absolutely. community. I have very wealthy residents in my district, and I have some of the poorest uh, residents to be found in our state. I mean, not to put you on the spot, it seems like you have a little bit of a dislike for the governor, which is apparent. Uh, would there be any interest by you in uh, 2013 to perhaps uh, seek the Democrat nomination in New Jersey for governor? Absolutely not. And uh, I will tell you, uh, the governor, I don't dislike him personally, but I definitely do not agree or embrace his ideologies or his policies. Okay. Uh, again, the governor um, has stated on the record, as you mentioned before, about working together with the legislature on policies. Uh, do you still feel that cooperation is there since he's taken office in working bipartisan-wise with the, with the legislature since the, since the Democrat Party controls both chambers of the legislature? I think that the governor has not worked in a bipartisan fashion with the Democratic-controlled legislature. There are three things he prides himself on, pension and benefit reform, arbitration reform, and then we just did teacher tenure reform. But those are three uh, policy initiatives that both Democrats and Republicans know needed to be addressed. With pension and benefit reform, these towns in our state cannot afford to keep you know, up with the kinds of pension policies that we had and free health care. We can't afford it. Who pays for that are the taxpayers, the homeowners, and they're strapped. So on the three issues that he prides himself on being bipartisan about, these were issues, quite frankly, that Democrats began to address during the tenure of both Governor McGreevy and Governor Corzine. Governor Christie just had the opportunity to punt the ball over the goalposts at the end of the field. Um, I, 
by November 6th, uh, do you see a tight race uh, between Senator Carroll's and uh, Senator Menendez, or do you see, again, the margins what we saw in 2006 when he sought re-election the first time? I believe that our senator is going to have phenomenal success in this race, and uh, we're not going to sit back and rest on our laurels. We know the opposition can be very tricky. But we know that at the end of the day, we are going to do the work that is needed to give Senator Menendez a resounding victory in November. Well, again, thank you so much. And once again, we're standing here with State Assembly Speaker Sheila Oliver. We'll be right back on Hudson County TV.